Welcome back to OpenBXRX. The MTA continues to operate transporting essential workers amid ridership and service cuts and has had over 50 employee deaths as a result of COVID-19. Here to discuss the impact this pandemic has had on MTA is Mario Peliquin, MTA Chief Operating Officer. Thank you for joining us, Mario. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, the first thing I wanted to start with was um, learning about the MTA Essential Service Plan, which was implemented by the MTA um, in the wake of the pandemic in order to ensure the safety and health of employees and commuters. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we've decided to reduce the uh, service levels uh, as the city got uh, and the region got locked down uh, by the governor by uh, executive order. Uh, and the ridership numbers went down significantly where they are today at about uh, uh, 5 to 10 percent of the normal ridership that we would see on the transit system. Uh, we reduced it uh, to a level that's uh, much higher than what we need to carry the 5 to 10 percent of the riders. And uh, that's the service reduction that you've heard about, uh, but reducing by 25 to 30 percent. Uh, to accommodate 5 to 10 percent is uh, giving us a lot of room to maintain social distancing. And about the concerns about subway ridership being mostly homeless and sick, um, could trains and buses be the hotbed of this spread? Um, and how is the MTA approaching this issue? Uh, first, we don't believe so because uh, the, the, the virus spreads as viruses do uh, and uh, it's, it's the people that carry the virus, right? Uh, not the trains or the buses. Uh, infection happens where people uh, that are infected get into contact with uh, various items. Uh, so, so that's the first part. The second part is only essential workers have been supposed to travel anywhere uh, in the region and the city for quite a while now. And those people normally know how to take, they've been educated and they know how to take care of uh, sanitization and uh, spreading uh, germs, microbes, viruses, and so on. Uh, and uh, third, uh, there have been a lot of measures put in place uh, by the state, by the city, and by MTA uh, to further help reduce the spread of any viruses. So I think uh, together, all, all those uh, levels have done everything that they could to prevent the spread of virus. Of course, uh, not um, everybody listens to the, the good uh, advice from the health professional and, and professionals and so on. So, so uh, there, there is going to be contact or spread anywhere people go, uh, grocery stores, uh, drug stores, uh, restaurants and so on. Uh, and of course, that includes the transit system. But we don't we don't uh, agree that the transit system or the subway system is the main spread of any virus. And Mario, um, as we know, the NYC some NYC council members have called for Governor Cuomo to close buses and trains. What is the likelihood of this happening? And is MTA prepared for such a thing to happen? Well. It, you know, when you think about it objectively, it would be really irresponsible to shut down a transit system when the main purpose of that system during a pandemic like this is to carry the essential workers that are out there to save lives or help us feed ourselves um, or uh, prevent, uh, you know, fires, uh, police the city and so on. If we stop those, those essential services, all of a sudden, all those uh, tens of thousands of people would not have a, a, a mean to get to their work to do that uh, critical work at this stage. So, so thinking rationally about this, uh, the negative effects of shutting down the system would be a lot worse for the society than maintaining the system in a, in a res, uh, you know, responsible manner like we've done. And now on the deaths of transit employees, um, MTA chief Pat Foy, who tested positive for COVID himself, blamed the CDC for the deaths of MTA employees. Can you just comment on, on that? Um, yes, it's a real tragedy that we've lost uh, employees at the MTA uh, and, and several employees in all the trades and all the agencies that we have um, the transit agencies that we have. So it is a real tragedy. It's difficult for the for the MTA uh, executives and management because our job is to uh, to maintain health and safety for our employees, of course, in providing the essential service that we have to provide. Uh, but I would say uh, it's difficult for the colleagues of those employees that have passed 
uh, because of course they're close to them, uh, and it, uh, it it's really concerning when you see a colleague uh, that passes because of a, a pandemic like this. Uh, but I would say it's a lot more tragic and more difficult for the families, uh, and that is something that really affects all of us at the MTA because we feel for those family members uh, that uh, you know they did nothing wrong except go to work. Um, carry the essential workers around, contracted the disease somewhere, uh, and, and then passed. And about the families, the MCA has established a COVID-19 benefit. Can we just learn about that? Yeah, we've decided there, there are no rules or regulations for this, and we've decided that, uh, you know, to support those families that are there and, uh, um, you know, are, are now grieving and so on. Money doesn't solve the issue, but, uh, you know, contributing to their future with a $500,000 uh, donation to the family, uh, benefit to the family, uh, is going to help with the hardship that they're living through right now and uh, the immediate costs that they have to incur. Uh, so it, it is, it's a significant amount of money, but it's a small gesture in the grand scheme of things to uh, at least help with one portion of the hardship that they're going to, they're going to go through. Right. Um, and Mario, as I, from my understanding, you're in a center monitoring the pandemic now. Can you just tell us about what, what's going on behind you? Uh, the situation room behind us was activated very early on as the pandemic arrived here in uh, New York. Uh, and it's monitored 24 hours a day. Uh, and the people that are staffing that room um, are basically monitoring uh, progress of the pandemic uh, in the city, in the state, and in the whole country, and, and uh, keeping an eye on what's happening around the world uh, so that we can prepare uh, every day, uh, several calls every day, several reports are prepared every day, just so that we can adjust and, and be always prepared for what we see coming uh, from a few days ahead in other countries in Europe or outside of the continent. Uh, to any any uh, trends that we can detect here in the in the continent in the United States. Thank you. And before we go, Mario, just some final thoughts on what's next for the MTA during this pandemic, and a message for commuters and transit workers alike. Okay. Well, um, uh, you know, we've put in place uh, very aggressive uh, measures to help uh, the safety and the health of our employees and the, the passengers, the, the the customers for the MTA. Uh, from aggressive uh, sanitizing uh, to uh, uh, you know the, uh, reinforcing uh, state uh, directives and uh, healthcare professional directives uh, to the point where now everybody has to wear face masks and so on. Uh, we've helped also uh, with uh, educating people about social distancing, and the NYPD um, helps us with that. You may have seen them on platforms uh, with megaphones reinforcing the messaging. Uh, it's only to help people follow those uh, those guidelines that make a lot of sense. Uh, going forward, uh, we're monitoring now uh, in close coordination with the governor, the city, and so on, uh, the eventual restart of the economy in New York and the region, uh, and all working together, as the governor says, like uh, cogs in a wheel, uh, so that we can provide the service level that's needed for whatever level of restart we do at the same pace. So. Uh, we're very busy um, activating plans and uh, looking at our plans to make sure they're they're perfect all the time, so we can react quickly to any uh, any progress or or regress that happens over the next weeks and months. Thank you, Mario Paluquin, MTA Chief Operating Officer, for your time today. My pleasure. Open BXRX. We'll be right back.